life go to tracy brown live gals and guys go to tracy brown live go to tracy brown live go to tracy brown live gals and guys go to tracy brown live go to tracy brown live go to tracy brown live gals and guys go to tracy brown live go to tracy brown live go to tracy brown live hi everyone i didn't expect to come on today but I do feel a responsibility to come on. And so I'm gonna stick with how I feel in terms of being responsible. Just let me uh, make sure we got a good mic check. Good. How I feel. Okay, good mic check. I'm so happy that I got this computer. It's on payment, which is fine. It's on payment with Apple Pay, which is fine. Um, I'm glad to have this Apple Pay, oh my God. It allowed me to get this computer, so I'm really happy about that. Um, there's a lot going on today, and I think I wanna know, do you guys feel safe? What's, what's your feelings? What's going on with you? Do you feel safe? Um, do you feel happy? Do you feel sad? Do you feel sad? Do you feel at peace? Who feels at peace? I think there's a collective energy here and yet nobody is speaking it, right? Um, I can imagine that, uh, I think there's a collective energy. I can imagine that some might be feeling anger. I'm going to tell you to dissolve any anger that you're feeling. Unless you're the type of person that can talk through the anger and then push it down, push it away from you. If you have those tools, then I would invite you to feel what you're feeling as long as you know how to not let it take over you. This energy here, the uh, solar eclipse in Aries, Chiron is in Aries, the moon is in Aries. I think there's another planet in Aries. With Chiron, we are at the point of, we are at the threshold of healing. So, I don't want you to take feelings that you normally don't feel and believe it's anxiety or anger just because the, the feelings that you're getting are either new to you or so unfamiliar that you only know anger, right? Anxiety. Not everybody feels anxiety and you might misinterpret anxiety and push out anger instead, right? I'm a big fan of prayer. I mean, a big fan of prayer. So my go-to prayer when I don't know what else to pray is the Lord's prayer. Um, and that has been encouraged throughout the churches, every church. The Lord's Prayer is the church. Good morning, John. Good morning, John. Looking good in white. <laughs> um, so the Lord's Prayer. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. I shall not have anxiety. I shall not have anger. I will fear nothing. For thine art with me, 
God is with you. Thy rod, the same rod that he gave Moses, thy staff will comfort me. Surely goodness, the deity of goodness, and mercy, the deity of mercy, shall follow me all the days of my life so that I may dwell in the house of the Lord someday forever and ever. Amen. It's always a good idea to have one psalm that you are investing in. And the Lord's Prayer is that one psalm. Memorize it. Say it over and over until it becomes part of your system. And when you're feeling anger, don't push out the anger. Say the Lord's Prayer. Go, go in. Cry if you have to. Just don't push it out. So this eclipse energy is bringing about some changes, right? From, you know, for the next six months, particularly. And then the six months after that could be a lot of development. Now, how this unfolds is up to you because it could come down to anger supersedes, being vindictive, being mean, pushing out revenge, I'll get them. And the ripple effect will be felt six months from now. So within these six months is where it's gonna be important to learn who you are. Also, Chiron, the wounded healer, is asking us to step into our childhood past and begin to heal that. Aries is the beginner. They begin. Technically, this is the new year, right? March 21st, Aries is actually the new year. Begin. So with Chiron in Aries, it's ironic, right? Because just left Pisces, we're into Aries now, endings and new beginnings. But it's also the wounded healer. And we have to be able to start stepping in to our painful past to then allow yourself a reset of healing. Now, I'm not an astrologer. If anything, I will tell you all to follow Molly McCord. She is my go-to person. She gives me so much peace. I clean while I have her on, um, on my television. If I'm driving, I'll listen to her. Um, and this one, she has two out there right now. And they're both, you know, Aries-related, Eclipse-related. Um, and if anybody needs it, go ahead and email me or text me. I'll send it out. Um, DM me, uh, better on IG or email me. I'll send it out because it's not about tomorrow's energy alone. It's about the rest of your life. It's about dealing with your past, your childhood past. Why did you come on this earth to be abused? Where are your wounds? You're not a victim. Let's just start there. You are not a victim. You chose this life. You got full instructions before you came down and you agreed to this life. Now the choices you make is the relationship that you are giving back to God. The choices that you make. That is what you're healing from your past. So many of us are victims of terrible childhood issues, neglect, 
abuse, uh, drink, drunk, drunken parents, um, non-emotional parents. Who's had that? And it makes us grow up a certain way. But then how do you heal from a non-emotional parent? You become the emotional parent. And if you don't have children, you become the emotional person for everyone around you. You could try that. It doesn't mean lose yourself in other people's problems. It means to be kind and caring and considerate and to understand that the world does not wrap around you individually, that you are a part of a huge picture, be it in your family, be it at work, be it a random person in a grocery store. You are always a part of a big picture. And so how can you turn around something that was never given to you? Try it out. Try out compassion and love and caring. Don't judge the homeless person who's asking you for money. I agree, they are annoying but no more annoying if it had been I. And that's what we have to think, that you still get to go in a fancy car, a lovely home, and to be annoyed by the homeless person is weird. It's unacceptable. Give because you have a dollar to give. and see how doing certain actions will begin to heal childhood trauma. Anger might come first. It's really weird, the human experience. Ah, oh, he's always out in front of the supermarket. That's my problem, right? <laughs> he's always here when I'm here. I have only one rule with the homeless person they have to ask me. That's my only one rule. And if they ask, I will give. And I may not give more than a dollar. I don't know if that's appropriate, but I would think that if enough persons gave him a dollar, he'll get something to eat. Fuck it, he might get something to drink. I don't care. If liquor keeps him at peace, <laughs> Go get your drink, man. Not as much as these normal adults walk around here drinking and quiet in their homes. Uh-uh. Do whatever, it, do whatever it takes to make you happy. The wounded healer. Where are your wounds? Let's drudge them up. That's what the eclipse is asking you to take care of. The eclipse is asking you to begin healing, to reset. a do-over. It's an opportunity to get it right. Some people don't have the, some people lost the chance to do it right. But who's ever listening, take it on. Get back to doing it right. Get back to not caring what others, the way others don't think like you do. It's all okay. It really is. It's all okay. I made a little bird sanctuary for these doves, brown grounding doves, different species. And they're very territorial. And so we have very specific brown grounding doves here. And they watch over the homes and they walk back and forth like little warriors. They fight like a bunch of little bitches, but it's their energy. And the other day I was sitting by my neighbor's uh, steps and a bird with a bald head came to me and just looked at me and I was like, and he went to turn, I was like, oh, that's weird. Cause 
dogs aren't that friendly with humans. And I was like, that's weird. Like, why would he literally walk up to me on the sidewalk? And so I looked at the bird and I was like, Richard, the bird is bald. And he, he or she, I believe it's a he, seems so scrawny, skinnier than the normal birds that watch over the complex. And then I realized he was a, from a different species. And then I said, he got kicked out of his other community. The bald head is symbolic of the birds not liking, like they, they pluck the, the feathers off you. This, this bird is bald. I'm gonna post it so y'all can see it. And uh, I was mortified. And so he's looking for food. He's looking for a new home. And at first I saw the birds here not engaging, right? Being a little defensive. I spoke to just one of the birds and I said, let him in. Just, just let him in. I, I know you guys are territorial, but damn. This is a wounded bird, wounded healer, Chiron. And it's symbolic of something, right? For me, at least, everything is symbolism. And so I spoke to, the, to one bird, the aggressive bird, and I said, let him in. And so today I took a video where they did let him in. They didn't come near him, but they let him feed off the feeder that I provide for them. And they did not push him away. And I was like, oh my God, this is so symbolic of world healing for me. It doesn't mean that we're going to eat bread together, but it could mean Israel and Palestine. that we don't have to annihilate one another. Wounded healer, Chiron. Time to reset. Time to take care of each other. Consciously take care of each other. How can a big war dissolve if we can't even get along with our coworkers? Just a thought. Say hello to everyone. Look at everyone. Hi, Mother of Brats. Hi, Mimi. Grand Rising. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Marcella. Hi, Jakari. Um, ha I feel happy and at peace. I love that. Oh, Venus is in Aries. Mm, Mercury is in Aries. Yes, Angela. Thank you for that. I've been more calm lately. Mm. Maybe you're tapping into the proper energies, right? Because I have been very, very calm lately too, Cruella. Yes, North Node in Aries. Ooh, child, we are going at it with this Aries energy. Now, is it fighting power or is it a time to take the Aries energy and begin again? Hi, Keisha. Do you have my email address, sweetie? I am available and open right now. Um, let me see. Let me put it up for you, the banner. Email me, and I'm right by my phone, so I'll be able to answer it right away. Email me. There you go. And I'll send you the price list. Okay, sweetie? What a word this morning. Oh, I, you know, I, I speak from an authentic place of spirituality. Um, I don't study this. I just speak on it, and so I'm honored to have the gift of spirituality. I get a fresh start even though I'm starting over in a shelter. 
you are starting over. Don't add shelter to it. Remember to be in a shelter is to be safe, hovered over. Do you understand? You are starting over. And from this starting over, you're going to go in your past and you're going to see what got you to being in a shelter. And that's the things you need to reset while you're in a shelter. I know a little girl that's been in a shelter and she just calls me every six months and she is adorable and they will not kick her out to shelter. They will not. I think she's been in here for two years. They will not kick her out. She works and she's resigned the fact that she's in a shelter. She's resigned the fact that she needs to heal herself. And only as of recently is she, one, deciding to get a better job, and two, now looking into housing. And she's been with me for, I don't know, two or three years. And been in the shelter the whole time. A shelter is a reset. But remember, it's the cave. It's where you go to get away from the frying pan, get away from the fray. It's an opportunity to reset your nerves because someone said to you, come in to the shelter. Look at it differently and you'll have a beautiful experience. Look at it differently and see who is going to be there for you in the shelter because you'll meet an angel there, I promise you. <gasps> You've been following since Periscope, oh. Oh, this is Bella's mom, hi. Oh. Hi, Malika. Is that a black heart? And I got my glasses on. Malika with the gray heart or the black heart? Malika, either way, I love it. A white heart. Is it a white heart or black heart? I don't know. I like Malika with the hearts. I saw I saw quiet on set, Miss Tracy. I didn't know your son was a star. Very handsome son, Mrs. Tr Mrs. Tracy. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. I personally don't go by looks, not even for my son. Red heart. <laughs> it's not coming across as red. That's hilarious. Um, I don't go by good looks, not even for my son. Your heart better be good looking. And I do have to tell you, I really did raise a good kid in spite of Nickelodeon. I fought tooth and nail to make sure his soul, his soul was intact. So I fought him. I fought him every which way I could. I slammed his ass on a coffee table one day. He thought he could step to me and I was like, I'll go to jail. Boom, slammed him down. I do not play. All right. And his wife got a gem. And I, I don't say that because he's my son. I say that because I fought him tooth and nail. And I wasn't about to have a boy out there raising a boy, meaning with genitalia that's a penis, identified, identify as a boy, and think I was going to raise a scum of the earth son. Was not going to happen. Now, he could be mad at me all he wants, but when he stepped out in that world, he better do right. And there's not a person that can be found that didn't say, man, you have such a great son. Like, you birthed him? Yeah. Yeah, I birthed him. Yeah. As if to say, you're so problematic and you birthed that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm problematic because I've never dealt with my Chiron, my wounded self. But I made sure 
that I raised a healthy child. I made sure of it. And let me tell you something. Raising a boy is not easy. I did not make this boy my husband. I did not have him replace male energy in my house. I'm the mama. I'm that mama. I'm that black mama from back in the day. Remember when grandma used to be like, say one more word, say it. You will not have teeth. Remember that? And you believed her? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But thank you, Brittany. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, Chris, Sierra. Yes, that was me in the dock. Oh, hi, Big King Checks. Here. Who is asking for a reading? Thank you, Big King Checks. Just text 213 458 7408. Text right now. They're open, okay? And please press the like button. All right. Um, yeah, I'm wondering if there's a way to keep the conversations going. Like, this isn't a one shot deal. I'm wondering if there's a way to keep the conversations going so that somebody can always come to a certain place or platform to have conversations on what they're going through in terms of mothers that don't know what to do, in terms of children that want to tap into somebody and say, hey, this happened to me and you do you think it's normal? A group chat. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, Brittany. And the group chat needs to be like non-invasive, right? The group chat needs to be like for others, not for thyself, right? It's not so thyself can be glamorous and glorified. I am doing this this way. Like, I don't want that. I want to make sure that whoever moderates the group chat is open to allowing people to come through and not take it where you're being looked at as the crown and glory. No, the story is the crown and glory. Tell the story. Oh, and have several moderate. Oh, yes. Good morning, sweetie. So with that being said, I hope I'm catching everyone's comments. I'm kind of sitting in the sun, so my screen is a little blur. But thank you, Mismo. Thank you. It opened up a whole conversation there. Um, <clears throat> I do want to talk magic. And that's my world, right? Molly McCord talks astrology and speaks on it and gives you clarity. But I want to talk magic. And if you guys can... You can light a, a, a candle. If you need to get it today, get it today. Um, and, you know, I'm a really big fan on any size candle will do. I'm also deciding that you, you might be best to go get a artificial candle, right? An artificial light. Um especially for those of you that don't know how to play with fire. <laughs> um, but I just want you to decide that tomorrow's eclipse energy is about resetting, healing, and empowering, right? 
Aries is associated with Apollo. Apollo's a fighter. Take that energy and decide that I can have some of what God is putting down. Yeah, I appreciate that. I forgot you're in a um, shelter. And again, get an artificial candle, right? I like artificial candles. Okay, Brittany, there are some that flicker, uh, battery powered even. I love artificial candles, by the way. I don't know, it's my, the new thing that I'm going to start uh, better investing in. Let me see something, if I can send a picture over. Oh my God, this is so annoying. Artificial candle with flickering flames. Um, there's so many. And some of them look so damn real. I'll send this one over. And this is LED flameless, unbreakable 3D um, plastic battery operated. Let me send this one over. And this looks so real. Hold on, guys. Let's see. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This one is, nope, this one, yes, open, perfect. Look at this, Mismo. Oh, Brittany, I think it was Brittany. Brittany says, I can't light candles in here, but I do have some oil I pray over. That's just as good. But if you go on Temu, T-E-M-U, this is only $4 for this set. Oh, it's one piece. I guess it's a one piece. It's all right. It's $4. All right. Just for anyone that is hiding the magic or can't light candles or your husband may not like it, right? Your wife may not like it. Like, you know, when men start to get spiritual, it looks feminine, all right? So you might like, oh, I bought these um, artificial lights for, you know, the eclipse, you know, why not? I'm, I'm a man right now, why not, sweetie? Um, but the dollar store also has flickering tea lights, all that good stuff, right? So let me sit back a little bit. So much to talk about in terms of candle magic. So again, Brittany, if you have some oil that you pray over, I definitely would put the oil in the fingertips of my hands and I would pray with my lips very close to the oil, right? Also, I would pray over water, whatever you need. Water is very, very powerful. I would pray over the water and then I would drink it. All right. For those of you that don't know enough about candle magic, uh, grapeseed oil, is a good oil to use, right? Everyone thinks you've got to have these scented oils. You don't. Olive oil probably is the best oil. So pick up some olive oil, some grapeseed oil um, to use for candle magic. And grapeseed oil um, is for abundance and money, right? Um, the benefits of olive oil is immeasurable. Let me 
see if I can find it. I'm here, guys. Just me look in my repertoire of notes. Olive oil is about fidelity, marriage, peace, money. Assures fidelity and love and is used to attract marriage, fruitfulness, security in love, family, and business. It can be used for peace, potency, fertility, healing, protection, and lust. Mm. So sometimes when you want to have fun in the bedroom, just choose olive oil, child. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I teach you. Um, so in any case... This is the time to invest in our ancestral pasts, known and unknown. This is the time to invest. Let me check. Um, so I spoke to my uh, group today, my group mates. Let me see something. And, uh, you know, we had a whole conversation this morning on what we could be doing, right? And so I said to my group, and I'm saying it to you now, that around today, do it today, repeat it tomorrow, repeat it after the eclipse, right? Repeat, repeat it three times or six times or nine times, doesn't really matter. But you might want to write it down or write these words down and then add to what I'm telling you. So this is what I've been posting. This is not your mama and daddy's fearing days. This is not your church mama and daddy fearing days. We powerful now. Take that eclipse energy and harness it inside your body. Stand outside. Turn your face to the window. It does not matter if it's cloudy outside. We're talking about God's energy. The eclipse still occurs and the energy surrounding the eclipse still occurs regardless of whether or not you could see it. Stand outside at 220, 219, 221. Look out the window. If your chest out and pulling both the lunar and the sun rays, close your eyes and call in your ancestors. You are not to do this in the bathroom. If you're at work tomorrow, just find the window and look out the window. Take your break. Call in your ancestors for good health, good reactions, money, 
powerful love from the intimate to all of social media, to your business, to the greatest of generational mental health for you and your whole family lineage, known and unknown. Throw your hands to the sky and say, God, I command of thee that I get everything because I am kind and generous and meaningful and I am the one for you to choose to accept all powers of psychic wealth and psychic knowing because I am one with you. I am one of you. I am a likeness of you. I believe that I am you. Make me what you will be to be of ever greatness. Protect and order my steps. Shield me from all harm and let me not cower. Let me be helpful to the children behind me in this world and all this plan. Give me all the spiritual gifts, God. And I know how to share and disperse evenly. Trust me to be a part of a greater system of my ancestors that weren't afraid before I came to this earth. I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. In your name I pray, amen, amen, ashe. Wow. Wow, that felt really good. Breathe. Breathe through your nose and out through your mouth. Just breathe. And I'm going to post it and play some music so you can have the opportunity to look at it and pause and screenshot. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, guys. Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. And take a moment and read this. Play a little music for you. Thank you. 
That's the first part, and this is the second part. So, add to it your personal conditions, your reset. Add to what I said. Change the words to suit your needs. Add good health. Add good health. Don't worry about money. What difference does it make if you don't have good health? Add good health. Make that the first thing you learn to ask God for. Add psychic awareness. Say to God, give it to me. Give me strong intuition and let me use it to help myself and then others. Excuse me. Include your family. Include your immediate family and then include your extended family. Let's hope for change for all of our family members. Include America, Ukraine, Palestine, the whole continent of Africa, (laughs) Egypt, Mexico, Native Americans. Include, because this is my design, but you do it your way, but I'm not apologizing anymore. Include all Black folks around the world. Include that their children do not accept the lies that's been told. That's people 40 and under and galactic kids and pandemic kids include people you don't know as a totality. Let's uplift each other in a way where we win spiritually. If the clouds are out tomorrow, it's because the element of air is participating in the change and is carrying it to God, to your spirits, to your ancestors. You don't need to see the eclipse. You need to feel it. You need to be in it. You need to participate in it. Don't look up. Don't use those glasses that they're providing. 
You don't need to look at the eclipse. You need to feel the eclipse. Don't look up. You need to pray. You need to teach your children to respect the energies and pray. Close your eyes and put your head up. And do not use those glasses. It's all an illusion to disengage us from spirituality. This eclipse is not an accident. It's mandated. So don't be tricked and don't be fooled. family members. The beautiful conundrum, Sky said, it's most definitely a great awakening, especially for us to see things, what is not for what you've been told. It's third eye energy opening and moving from 3D to 5D. And I actually saw the 6D energy coming through. I actually saw that. Some of us, Sky says, are going into a death as the eclipse starts leaving things behind and a new you will emerge, rebirth. Some slight things will change for others, major things for even others. But the eighth, the number of affinity will be changed, brought in for you. That was Guy. So So it is what it is, isn't it? Tomorrow is a two day, so let me read that for you. I love numbers, by the way, spiritual numbers. Tomorrow's a two day, so it's the number of balance, choice, harmony, moderation, pairs of opposites, duality, polarity, partnerships, friendships, relationships, group activities, reflection, development, and affection. Patience, be patient, affirmation, quiet waiting, tending to the garden, 
confirming a new direction. Cooperation, diplomacy, tech, persuasion, sympathy, devotion, and working with others. In geometry, two points determine a line. The cards numbered to give direction to the seeds planted by the aces, the major icona in tarot cards responding to the number two are high priestess, justice, and judgment. These are powerful cards associated with the number two, particularly judgment. Judgment is the phoenix rising from the ashes. You are no longer who you or someone else has labeled you to be. It is a rebirth. It is the ending of a phase of life and the assessment of that phase. You didn't go through the fire to not like yourself. You didn't get a divorce or break up in a relationship to not understand why you invested in that relationship and then reset and take your history with you by empowering yourself to be better than you were before. I remember I broke up with somebody that I absolutely loved. And in hindsight, why? But when I woke up out of my depression, what I remembered the most is God saying to me, you asked me for him. And I said, I did, but why didn't he stay? And the answer that I got back was, he was never meant to stay, but you asked me for him. Can you remember how you enjoyed him and take that with you? Not the pain of not being with him. He has something else I've designed him to do, and I got something else for you. But together, you couldn't do it. And once I got that memo, I have been free of the wanting. I had to trust that being new again, separated from, leaving from, was for my greater good. I didn't have to understand it. I had to accept. And from that point on, I've always taken all the good things from that relationship, the good things from that relationship, not the bad. I dropped the bad at the door. The judgment is a rite of passage, a career change, a promotion. It's resurrection. The judgment is beyond death. It's the ashes. And a creation of something new and better. But take your time. This is not meant to be overnight. I want to see who you are a year from now. The need to evaluate or be evaluated, but it's rejuvenation. The phoenix rises from the ashes. You take something that somebody tried to tear down and you alchemize yourself into being and taking that energy and being even better than anyone thought. I'm the alchemist. I did that. It could be a decision you need to make. It could be a call of action, but it's renewal. It could be your identity crisis. How many people are walking around trying to be straight when you're gay? How many people? Free yourself. Be bi if you want to. Be gay if you want to. But no more bullshit. 
This is your identity. This is your whole world. Do not leave this world being something for somebody else anymore. Do not do it. It's a readjustment, a transition. But awake. It's the big awakening. Metamorphosize into who you are. Reset. Break from convention. It's about major changes. It's about a mandatory choice that will change your life for the better. I'm not saying everybody's going to like it. I'm saying it's better for you. Cleansing, purification, regeneration, a new life. You think fire doesn't purify? It does. Burn that shit down. Burn the spirit down of others that made you into who you are. And you don't like that. It's about transformation and healing and breaking free of habits, drinking, Drugs, prescription, being mad all the goddamn time. Break free from all of that. This is about being revitalized. It's a clean slate. Can you guys see the association between 4, 8, 24 and the number 2 and the card judgment? Like there are no accidents. God is no joke. He's amazing and he's fierce. And he's loving. And he gets mad like you do. And he loves again like you should. But this cycle today, this cycle ends. And you are forced to prepare for a new stage of growth. And psychically, a lot of us are going to be seeing things. Don't drive yourself crazy. It's part of the 5D slash 6D. I talk to the goddamn birds all the time. Now, might I be a little crazy? Yeah, maybe just a little crazy. But I'm okay with that. I have fun with my little crazy. But I tell you one thing, the damn birds listened to me when I said, give the little bird with the bald head a chance. Let him thrive. And they listened. And the bird was able to eat without fear. Wow. Because now's the time for major changes. Decide to improve yourself. You're going to go through a rebirthing. It doesn't have to be good. It all depends on how immersed we are in convention thinking. But if you trust God with this change, nothing will bother you. You will be at peace. This is the end of a cycle, a time of renewal and awakening, a time to reap the rewards of what your past actions. So I hope you did well. But if you did not, reset today. The time has come to wipe the slate clean and prepare for a positive, new beginning but you can see now and that's what we're standing on being able to see now the candles came from Temu T-E-M-U.
call me for your own personal reading. I am here today. We are going to fix this spiritually. There was something else I wanted to play before I leave. Let me see something. Um, it's on my IG, and I wish I would have thought about finding it earlier. Let me see if I can find it. It's this guy that talks to his ancestors, and he has since passed on, and it was so powerful what he left behind. And I played it on my IG, and somebody contacted me and they said, Tracy, he's dead. Do I still listen? And I responded to her, Jesus is dead. Boom. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Give me a second, guys. Because it was so powerful that I really want you guys to invest. And if I can't find it, I'll repost it. How's that? Let me look for it. And in the meantime, I want you guys to reinvest in these words. Hold on. And I'll play some music while I look for what I need to look for. Okay. And this is the second part.
gal Gals and God. This is from Y M Y E R H D A D. This was in July 2021. I'm looking for another one, this powerful, powerful guy. And uh, I played it two years ago, and it was so apropos for what I was going through. And I sat outside every night and asked the energy of my ancestors to come through for me. But I don't see it, so it's okay. It's okay. I just wanted to share it with you all because it was just so amazing to have this man come through at a time where I had a reset two years ago and I was alone and I had to figure out how to move forward alone. And the first thing I got was God was like exercise. And so I've got all these exercise videos with my plump belly. So funny. But I can't find it now. Hmm. All right. Sometimes I wonder if IG removes things. If I find it, I will play it separately. How's that, guys? just such an amazing man to get me through the pain that I was going through a couple of years ago. Taught me how to call in my ancestors. It was so beautiful. All right, guys, I'm going to stop here. Do you guys have any questions? Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know that I've helped you. Do your magic. Oh, here it is. I found it, guys. I found it. Do you want to hear it? Yes, I found it. Oh, my God. I'm so happy. I knew if I stayed patient, I would find it, but I also didn't believe I would find it. You're going to love this. Let me put his face up. By the way, this what you see in front of you is the symbol of God. Just look it up on Google. It's a symbol of God. Let me add this. I'm so happy. Yes. Oh, no. Wait, what happened? Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Oh. Chrome. Hold on, guys. Okay, I think I'm in the wrong spot. All right, cancel. Yes, I was in the wrong spot. Nope, here it is. Yes. Listen up. This is how you call in your ancestors.
those of you, and you know who you are, that you should gather some water. It could be tap water or spring water, any water that you want. You're going to take this water. You're going to walk outside of your door, your front door. And you're going to pour the water very slowly on the ground. And you're going to call on your ancestors. And you're going to call on the gods of your ancestors. And you're going to ask those gifts that have been with you, that have given you guidance, that have given you the ability to see or to know or to feel certain things throughout your life that have given you guidance. People call it your gut, your gut feeling, this visceral identity that's inside of you that would speak to you and give you guidance. You're going to ask as you're pouring this water that they introduce themselves to you. Yes. Not just as their abilities or their gifts, but then they introduce themselves to you. That in your dreams, that they should come to you and give you guidance yes. and reconnect you to your ancestral powers. Yes. You should tell them to connect you to the strongest ancestors that exist within your bloodline. That your ancestors should go and collect those people and they should go collect the gods of their ancestors and they should bring them to you and guide you and give you wisdom and protection and safety. Those of you who do this will have a conversation. And as you're pouring this water and it's falling, you'll say these things and then you'll just stop pouring the water. You could go back in your house and then go to sleep. <laughs> for women, you'll repeat this process for four days. Men, you'll repeat it for three. <laughs> And you'll promise them that when they come to give you guidance or they show themselves in your dreams that you will come back and you will pour more water for them or you'll pour milk for them. All right, guys, Lisa, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Good morning, Kat. Good morning, Chrissy. Do you guys need to hear this again? Are you guys good? Some people came through new, and I'm going to leave you with the words that you should be saying out loud during the eclipse. I'll read it one more time because it's very important to understand how powerful you all are. Quiet yourselves. This ain't your church mama fearing days. We powerful now. Take that eclipse energy and harness it inside your body. Stand outside or look out a window at 220-ish with chest out. Pull in both the lunar and the sun rays. If there are clouds out, pull in the clouds too. Call in all your ancestors for good health good reactions, money, power, love, from the intimate to all of social media, to your business, to the greatest of generational mental health for your whole family lineage, known and unknown. Throw your hands to the, to the sky and say, God, I command of thee that I get everything because I am kind and generous and meaningful. And I am the one for you to choose to accept all powers of psychic wealth and psychic knowing because I 
am the one with you. I am one of you. I am of likeness of you. I am of likeness of you. I believe that I am you just as my brother Jesus was of you too. Make me what you will be to be of ever greatness. Protect and order my steps. Shield me from all harm. Let me not cower. Let me be helpful to the children behind me in this world and all this plan. Give me all the gifts, God, and I know how to share and disperse evenly. Trust me to be a part of a greater system of my ancestors that weren't afraid before I came to earth. I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Ashe. And yes, I am open today for support. Text me at 213-458-7408. I am open for readings.